Welcome back to our system design series. In today's episode, we are going to discuss microservices, a popular architecture style that helps build scalable, flexible, and resilient systems. By the end of this video, you will understand that microservices are what are my, what are what, what microservices are, their advantages, and how they fit into modern system design. And it will be pretty important aspect of your system design interviews. I guess you will use microservice a lot. So let's say that imagine you are building a complex application like an e-commerce platform. It, it has multiple functionalities, user, uh, user uh, registration, product catalog, order processing, payment handling, and more. If all of these functionalities are built together as a single application, any change or failure in one component can impact the entire system. This where microservices come into play. So let's go down here and see instead of having like one big server or one big system that handles everything for us we will break this system into smaller more manageable pieces so if we have um um, um a, a, a e-commerce platform we'll have a user service okay user service we will have as well, like let's say that uh, a product service, and uh, we have like a product service, we could have like, uh, let's say that maybe on another one, which is for example, an order s service. Of course, in, uh, in a real world e-commerce, we might have more services than that, but let's assume that we only have three services. So instead of having one big server that handles everything, uh, we will have multiple services that handles each uh, uh, head, head, uh, that handles one uh, functionality or one um, aspect. So micro, like as you as, as you can think about it. Um, if all these functionalities, for example, build together in one server or one single server, any change or failure in, in one component can impact the entire system. And if we're using a microservices, as you can see in the right side here, microservices basically are an architectural style where an application is broken down into smaller independent, um, independently deployable services. Each microservice is responsible for specific business cap um, capability, such as user management, product uh, service, maybe we can add handle payment, order processing, and these services communicate with each other, often through APIs, maybe a message queue, like we use a message queue, uh, so they can um, communicate with each other produ with in the producer consumer style, and by breaking down um, application into smaller services, microservices enable independent independent development and deployment. This means that teams can work on different parts of the application simultaneously using the technologies that best fit for their needs without being tied to that tech stack. So. In a microservice architecture, each service runs independently and can be deployable, deployed, updated, or scaled without affecting the other services. Uh, communication between microservices or oh, happen through like a REST APIs or maybe like a, 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 a gRPC or message queue like Apache Kafka. This approach makes the system more modular and easier to manage. Um, so this is an example of how it works. So if we have a problem in the user service, the only user service will be affected and the other services will continue to operate as expected. So by this one, by, by using microservices, right, first it's easier to scale. It's, um, it's more, it's, uh, it's, um, our system right now, it's more resilient. Our system right now, um, if, uh, it can, can, can provide better availability instead of having one server when it has a problem everything will be lost so we don't have any single point of failure as you can see so for example when a user places an order in an e-commerce website the order service communication with communicate with um, the, the inventory service for example to check the availability and the payment service is uh, is here to process the payment and the notification service to send confirmation email. Each of these services operates independently but works together to fulfill user requests. So 
let's understand what is the benefits from uh, microservices. And I would say the first thing will be the scalability. Uh, scalability. Scalability. Microservices can scale independently based on demand. For instance, if the product catalog service or if the product service, for example, this one, um, um, getting a lot of traffic, you can scale it uh, separately without affecting the other services. Also, the second benefit that we get from microservices will be the flexibility in technology. Different microservices can be built using different technologies that best suit their needs. You can have one service written in Java and another one in Python, allowing teams to choose the best tools for the job. And three, we have resilience. Like since each service runs independently, the failure of one service doesn't bring down the entire application. For example, if the payment service goes down, users can still browse products and add them to their cart. And number four, uh, let's say I, I, I didn't put this on. And number four, it will be the faster development and deployment as well. The faster development and deployment. Um, teams can develop, test, and deploy individual services without waiting for changes into the entire application, leading to faster uh, release cycle and more agile development. Basically, if we want to take an example for that, I guess Amazon is a great example of microservices architecture. Um, Amazon is a great example of, uh, of a company that successfully trans, uh, tr um, tra transitioned from a monolith architecture to a microservice architecture, like each part of Amazon platforms, like uh, the product search, payments, and recommendations is managed by a separate microservices, allowing for better scalability and resilience. Another great example, I guess, it will be Netflix. Um, so, I guess, uh, which uh, adopt microservices to handle the massive scale st of streaming content to millions of users worldwide by using microservices Netflix can independently scale and update its services ensuring a seamless viewing experience um, even under high load. So in your system design interview, I guess microservices are often used to build complex distributed systems where different where different services can evolve independently for instance in um, a ride sharing application if you are, if you if you will design something like uber you can have a separate microservices for driver management ride matching payments and notification this modular approach make it easier to uh, to a new uh, feature or modify existing ones without disturbing the entire system um Okay, so uh, we ha we might see some challenges in the microservices. It's important to talk about that as well. The first time it will be the increase in the complexity because um, the increase in the complexity it's a big one here because managing many independent services can be quite complex. Each service needs its own deployment, monitoring, and scaling strategy. The second thing it will be the communication overhead. Um, since microservices communicate over um, a network, this um, uh, there is added latency and potentially points of failure compared to um, process communication in a monolith uh, in a, a, a monolithic uh, uh, system architecture. And lastly, which is the data management, um, ensuring data consistency across multiple microservices can be quite challenging, especially when each service has its own database. We will talk about that in the future on about how to um, microservice in details and what are all the the challenges and how to solve them in details. But for now, we're only talking about microservices on uh, on on high level. So to summarize everything, microservices are architectural style that helps break down complex application into smaller independent services that can be developed, deployed, and scale independently. They offer great benefits in terms of scalability, resilience, and faster development cycles. But they also come with challenges like increased complexity and communication overhead. So if you found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video and see you in the future.